E Y R N. Eleven thirty four. Umagete. E X C O. Ten forty four. Cagayan de Oro. D X G S. Seven six five. General Santo. D X O C. Fourteen ninety four. Osami. D X O W. Nine eighty one. Dava. At Radio Filipino Podcast Center Manila. Ito ang kabahagi mo. Radio Filipino. Napapakinggan on air. On air. And online. Online. Sa buong mundo. Sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com uh, Can you make us a, ano, a plaque? Ayan. Plaque. Mga tokens. Yung mga baso-baso na ganyan. Uh, this one is a scale model ng isang university sa Pangasinan. So they also, ano, they also come to us and then they ask for help. Uh, if they have their design, maganda. But syempre, if there is a, kami pang mag-design, it would be more difficult. But this is what uh, we are doing now. Ito po is hindi pa nagagawa, but it's already a plan na ginawa ni Architect Donna. This is our TBI that we are currently using the city center kasi malaking naman siya. And the equipment, wala pa kasi. So, hindi pa namin nagagawa dahil sa COVID. But this is already the plan for technology business incubator. So, if you if you, you have an idea, you want to come up with a business, you want to have a startup, Come to us. Come to us, ah. Not in UC. Joke. <laughs> Joke lang. Oh, okay. come to us. No, we have different kasi, um, magkaiba ko ang, ano, ang, kumbaga, yung forte namin sa UC at saka sa SLU. But we are partnering, well, we're starting to partner with a lot of, parang researches like Archie. We partnered already with them. So ito po, uh, and yung aming plan for the PBI. So here we want to converge with the industry, not only the industry, even the businesses, the community, etc. With the academy and the business uh, sector and the industry, ang ganda po kasi if you are, let's say, an alumni and then diba, you have your own business, you can teach our students. Hindi po kami ang nagtuturo sa kanila. No? Yung mga talagang meron po silang... Uh, meron silang uh, experience. Ito yung disruptive design innovation. And we always call for what? Pag co-design naman tayo, we collaborate. Ano ba yung kailangan mo? So let's, let's share. Ours is engineering. Yours is finance. So let's collaborate and help this one industry or one uh, company needing our, our expertise. So this is what we are doing here. We have also startups already in uh, in the CBI. These are some of our incubators. Every break, this joint. Uh, ito yung mga ginawa po nila na pwede na siyang maging startup kung i-continue ng mga estudyante at mga researchers na faculty sa St. Louis University. And like for example, si Iblap. Uh, familiar ako dyan kasi naging ano ako dyan, naging part nung, uh, nung organization nila, yung paggawa. Daling lang po yan sa dirt. Yun lang. Yun na po. Pwede na siyang block. So, mas mura siya sa hollow block. 10 pesos lang yung ito. Yung magkano hollow blocks ngayon. So, actually, na-develop pa rin yan hanggang ngayon. At ito po si Gassem. Ito po yung ano, binili ni Holcim. Ito po. So, hindi sila mga IT pero they were able to come up with a with a sensor tunare sa mining sa Minas, di ba? Lago ka pumasok, i-check mo man ano poisonous di gas, di ba? Di ba yung traditional they put what? They let the birds go inside and then if they don't come out, it means that it's poisonous you will die. But now they have this as a sensor and they would it's an indicator if it's safe to go inside or not. And Nagbigay sila ng fund, so they have prototype number two, and it's already with whole skin. Zio Skin, ito po ngayon is uh, a very, one of the active incubators namin, and nakapasa siya sa DOS si T-shirt. Binigyan sila ng pondo, even equipment, binigyan sila to test the material. Siya nga yung Zio Skin, tapos nga yung Boysen, so it's uh, a zeolite, Uh, material they absorb na j uh, pollutant uh, in, especially in the parking area na enclosed so ang kanilang um, ang kanilang initial na customer is the 
ano yan, si sa gitna, Sabanaw Square. Yan. So they're actually collaborating already. And that's the Zio Skin. Ito na po yung development ng Zio Skin. And uh, we hope na magiging ano siya, mag-commercialize na siya soon this year. And we have to do that because our committee to DOSG also is to have a graduate. They give us a grant. Kan kayo ti kwarta ang yun, at pag-graduate kayo ti incubate, that's actually our objective also. This one is the new, uh, one of the, ano, pinakabago rin na incubate namin, Archie, making use of robotics sa agriculture. Tap no nga'y ma-detect na jay, um, sige ti haan nga mayat, pesticides ti LRB din tayo, di ba? Ito is not. Kasi, cancer patient, survivor po siya, so yung mga kinakain niya is very particular siya. So doon yung hugot niya, kung bakit meron yan. Then another one is the ex-event. This one naman is during COVID-19, itong estudyante na to is gumawa siya ng ventilator. So instead na yung manual, may ginawa po siya na um, mechatronics uh, student. Tapos ginawa, gumawa po siya ng ex-event. Ito yung para continuous yung air na pumapasok sa sa tao. No? Lalo na pag uh, nag a na siya. This one naman is uh, medyo advanced sila. It's Unifinity. Uh, more on IT ito eh. Kasi you don't need face-to-face. Uh, -face. Pay your tuition fee to do your lectures. Para siyang Zoom type uh, idea. And yun yung gusto niyang uh, i-impose. Uh, parang educational system ng bansa. And ito naman po, this one is CCID. Ito naman is a solution provider. Kaya nga, uh, yung founder naman po is ako at saka yung partner ko po, si Prince. So, ito po naman yung, ang ginagawa namin is to solve problems sa community. For example, we have BioRemind. Yeah, this one naman is galing po sa waste material ng mining industry. So, pwede tayo agmula ijay. So, meron kaming ginawang solution for that. We also made bricks out of the, uh, yung waste po ng mining natin. Pero, syempre, ang hirap din i-convince ang mining industry. They're saying that there is no problem with their, no, no, ano, no, no pollution. We are not doing that. <laughs> Nung pre-sent namin. So, it's, may, may konting, ano, problema rin. But, it's a good product din. It's like, um, so, yung bricks na ito ang ginagawa po natin. It's a solution provider. So, we promote and showcase our incubators because we need also uh, partners and at the same time, investors. No? And today, we want to invite the community. Please come and visit us and join us and let's do innovation for our community. We are there, but of course, it's COVID-19. It's difficult to go there. But uh, we are hoping that as soon as we're done with this COVID-19, we are open again to uh, the community. That's all, Paul, and thank you for listening. All right. Thank you, Ms. Corazon Campo of the SLU, uh, School of Engineering and Architecture. All right. From SLU, naman. <laughs> uh, from SLU, yeah. From SLU, um, let's go to UC. Yeah, no, right. From the University of the Cordilleras. Habang mag-reset up si... Mm -hmm. um, si uh, Sir Ethan. Uh, parang kanina, pinapanood ko, tinitignan ko si Doc Rama na doon sa mga uh, innovations, mga robotics. Parang uh -oh. gusto i-challenge si Doc Rama yung mga nandun. Eh. Parang nga. Uh, <laughs> parang mag gusto niyang i-simplify. Uh -huh. uh, we thought, I thought three things uh, will be useful, very, very useful for us. Uh -huh. for rescue. Yung ginamit niyo for the mine, uh, we have our hazmat group. That would be very useful for us. Mm -hmm. right. Especially right now, ano, yung mga post-mining activity, dito po sa atin, mas kailangan po. Sir, we actually developed a bag. Nung nakita ko yung, ano, yung ginagawa niyo, uh, para sa ano, yung mga disasters, may mga dinevelop kami mga bag. But it's still there. Presented also to the PNP para tignan nila kung okay ba. They liked it, but hindi na sila bumalik. <laughs> but we developed bags po na pang-survive pang, ano, pang pang ng mga tao. 
how we, we would be also. very much interested in that if they come in mostly to bring in things for yeah. during the disaster uh, yes. one of these days I was being okay father Bobby when I visit it's my brother-in-law mm. uh, the father Bobby when I get to visit them uh, and papa thing yes sir just look for the heart box heart box from Bao yeah yeah, yeah that, that would be nice yes yeah thank, thank you. you all right ma'am bago kaya no one question lang uh, ma'am Cora Ah, uh, sino po ang mga estudyante sa SIRIP? Um, ito po ba ang itinuturo dito? Uh, our architects or students and engineering, engineering po. Yes. Sila po. No? Because of the Techno 101 subject. Mm. But this one po, if they have research, we collaborate with the other colleges kasi hindi naman lahat eh, expert <laughs> ang engineering students. But you have subject already parang ro robotics. Yes, we started. Saka, no? Yes, uh, yeah, for mechatronics. Yes, Mecha, po. Mechatronic. Mechatronic. Sana you can develop a prototype na parang si Trans Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. <laughs> Actually, may, Transformers. Ato, meron. Meron na po. Kasi ano, <laughs> meron, na. meron na po yung ano, yung uh, hindi, uh, meron na po yung uh, equipment namin na nabili ng DTI hmm. na pwedeng yung sa arm sa robotics pwede na po siya. Sana, isama niya ka rin Megatron para may kanya. Yes, Transformer. <laughs> Sineset up na po namin. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Corazon Ocampo. From uh, the University of the Cordillera, we have uh, uh, the incubator manager of uh, UC UCN. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Ethan Miguel Salvador. Sir Ethan, good afternoon once again. Good Then we will accommodate questions from our... Uh, friends from the media. Sure. Thank you everyone for being here today and thank you to everybody also um, viewing the live stream on Facebook. So I'm Ethan again from the University of the Cordillera's Innovation and Nurturing Space. So kami po ang parang bridge from the academe to the outside for the entrepreneurs or wannabe um, entrepreneurs, uh, technopreneurs uh, from the community as well as from the university. So we are a technology business incubator under the DOST Shared Series program. We were um, established in April 2019 last year, and this was due to the Republic Act 11337, uh, which was passed early last year in February 2019. Um, this Innovative Startup Act is an act providing benefits and programs to strengthen, promote, and develop the Philippine startup ecosystem. So what about bang start up? Sorry. So um. Other than UC, there are also 21 other universities who were um, part of this grant um, given last year. And SLU, the Convergence Resilience DBI, also one of them. So dito po sa Baguio, I think Baguio is one of the only cities that has more than one TBI. So UC and SLU. And the main goal is to really develop the startup ecosystem in the Philippines. So what is startup culture? Um, startup culture is really less... Um, Formal compared to like corporate culture, it's more free flowing. It's more like um, do whatever you need to do to get to where you want to be. That kind of mindset. Parang ano yung sunyin nalang nata ko? Ganito eh. It's like this. It's like that because um, we just really um, do whatever it is that we need to do to achieve the idea that we have in mind. Um, it's a uh, freely exchanging thoughts and ideas um, wherever and whenever, whenever. So there's really no set time for the startups to work, they can work whenever they want to. And the main goal, really, of these um, TBIs or these incubators is to develop the startup ecosystem in the Philippines so that we can eventually thrive, similar to how it is in Silicon Valley, California, right? They have like a bunch of different incubators and accelerators that come up with startups that eventually um, scale up and become these big tech giants like Facebook, Grab, Instagram. These are all small garage companies, and then look at them now, right? Um, Multi-billion dollar companies. So um, our objective is basically to drive the culture of innovation by providing business and technology transfer opportunities among faculty, students, alumni, and the community. So other than the first three, um, faculty, students, and alumni, we also encourage people from outside who have ideas that they want to develop or scale or innovate to come to us so that um, we can help them with our network, with our um, facilities, readers, and whatever it is that we have in the TBI. 
So these are the services that we provide. Um, we have demo day investor pitches. We have um, workshops, boot camps, and all of these actually revolve around our incubation program. And um, the main service that we really provide is design thinking. So like Mam Cora said earlier, um, design thinking is really when um, the developers or the creators um, revolve around the users, the ones who are um, going to use the product eventually. Um, these are the five phases of design thinking. We have empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. The main one, the anchor to all of these, is empathize because we really need to get to know who our users are. We need to understand their pain points, their needs, their insights, and why, we, why we're making this app, this um, product for them. And um, also we provide technopreneurship training. Um, before COVID, we used to conduct these trainings in the theater, in our space, or in the auditorium you see. But due to COVID, uh, the pandemic, um, oh yeah, this is a picture from the auditorium. Due to the pandemic, we had to conduct all of these seminars and workshops virtually, which kind of had like a learning curve at the beginning, but then you get used to it and eventually it becomes second nature. So yeah, this is the incubation program that we have. So um, there are five pillars in place for our startup incubators to go through so that by the end, equip na po sila so that they can um, scale their companies. The first pillar is you conceptualize. If you notice, you have this UC theme going, you conceptualize, you create. <laughs> so um, you conceptualize being the fundamentals, design thinking, um, the basic business model canvas, and how to pitch, how to talk in front of people, and how to sell your idea to um, whoever is an audience. Next, we have you create, so more technical po siya. Um, software development, graphic design, multimedia. Kasi po some of the startups, uh, wala naman akong idea mag-program mag or mag-develop or mag-code. Hopefully, by the end of this, um, they'll be um, equipped with the basics of how to create a simple software or how to scale their ideas. And then next, we have you collaborate, which is more on the collaboration and getting your idea out there to the market. Filing for intellectual property and creating um, financial projections and stuff like that. And then we have you commercialize, which is more for networking. So. Best case scenario for you, you, you commercialize is that um, sila ng investor, need investment from angel investors or venture investors. And then you carry on is where the um, startup incubator continues the startup even after the incubation program. So this is our um, hierarchy, our organizational structure. And um, just to acknowledge, we have our KTTO officer, needs officer, Tim Anselma in the audience. And, Project developer Carl Ilo. Ayan. So, um, our manager po kasi, si Sir Ariel, he, he was also the former dean of criminal justice in UC, which was one of the top schools in criminal justice for the, for like, I think 20, 46 or 47 bar exams. Yeah. So, um, when the TPI was established, he was the one who was um, told to man the EBI and uh, develop it, but um, people started thinking, how come, what's the connection between criminal justice and IT, diba? Medyo malayo yung fields. But if you look at IT, it's a very diverse field that you can really apply to any other field. Um, so the main um, thing that was being banked on here was that we, maybe we can create software or develop um, different types of applications for the field of criminal justice public safety, safety and security, um, forensic science, and everything in that field. But we wouldn't be just um, limited to only criminal justice, as you'll see later on. Ayon, so if you see some more engagements, the top role for a lot of law enforcement agencies. We've had engagements with um, government agencies. Um, Hug and Play and Bunch Garage based in Silicon Valley, California. IOL, one of the... Um, Top startups here in Baguio City, headed by Sir Kevin Gayo. And um, just to share some of our startup incubators, we currently have nine, and the five of them are going through the incubation program. We have three in the field of criminal justice. So this is uh, one slide of one of our startups, the 
arrest or automated reconstruction crime scene tool. So going back to design thinking, um, it all revolves around the user. And what they saw here was that in the field of criminal justice, currently, when they create um, crime scenes or they map out a crime scene, they draw it on pen and paper. So they thought, why not innovate this field by creating software that can emulate this crime scene in a 3D environment? So yun po yung ginagawa nila. And then they were also able to um, beta test this twice last year. And they received uh, 350,000 in angel investment. And then they also applied for um, their patent, which is currently underway. So the founder of this is also our TPI manager, Sir Ariel Pumecha and Anthony Basang. The Google Tech naman, Google comes from the German term bullet. Um, what they wanted to do here was um, bullet trajectory. So based on the point of entry, you can detect. Uh, so augmented reality is a technology they use. So if you take out your phone, like for example, Pokemon Go, di ba? So yung phone niyo, and then you can see that there are um, different Pokemons on your phone, but they're not really there in real life. That's what, that's what augmented reality is all about. So that's what they aim to do with Google Tech. So if you can pinpoint where the bullet, the point of entry of the bullet is in your body or the victim's body, it can kind of see where it came from in the room. Ayan, so we have a demo of this later on, maybe. Ayan po. So they can put the bullet speed, um, penetration angle, and then it will display the trajectory. And then you can move around with your phone and actually trace the the trajectory of the bullet. Um, they also joined the hackathon last year, Impact Hackathon, and they won regional here in the Cordilleras, and then they got second place in, second runner-up, so third place in national level. And then we also have VCAM, the Vehicle Centralized Automated Monitoring System. Um, uh, these students in October 2019, they joined a hackathon in uh, Camp Krame, uh, the first PNP ITMS hackathon. And they managed to bag first place with their product that they have. So the, basically, the product that they had was, um, it makes use of machine learning, where you input different data sets into the software, and then the software, Catalina, is going to get smarter over time, um, and then it will be able to detect whatever it is you want it to detect. So for example, in their case, they wanted to monitor the vehicles and the plate numbers that are coming inside and out and going outside Camp Krame. So ayun, it can detect that it's 79% a Toyota high ace and it can detect that this is the plate number. So yeah, they won the, the first PNP ITMS hackathon last year and uh, back I think 50,000 to continue the startup too. Um, we also have um, agriculture, so we have a farm to cart. So as I mentioned earlier, although our banner program is in the field of criminal justice, um, we don't uh, uh, scale apps only in the field of criminal justice. So farm to cart, they aim to bridge the gap between the farmer and the seller. I mean, the farmer and the buyer, the consumer. So that one is going to make it cheaper and it's going to be a faster transaction too. This is how their app is structured. So. The home screen, you can create an account if you're a farmer or if you're a buyer. Then you can see the different um, products that are available by the farmer. We also have Noma. So some of our startups, um, since we're stage agnostic also, um, we don't really um, care too much on what stage the startup is currently in. Um, investment stage, not sila, idea stage. Wala pang idea really on what to start, but they want to start a startup. So Noma is one of the startups that's still in the idea stage. Um, agriculture din sila, although they don't have a prototype yet. Um, what they aim to do is to um, let farmers know when would be the best time to um, plant crops, when to harvest. So they make use of a lot of data analytics too. We have um, health tech. We have two in health tech, FISO uh, AR, another augmented reality app. So the way they work Noman is if you're new into fitness and you want to get into fitness and you don't really know how to do these different types of exercises, you can take out your phone and then you can see like a, a person on your phone. So it's augmented reality. And then you can um, select an exercise and then mag-workout yung 
yung dummy or the model in the phone. Like, if you want to learn how to squat, sitting on your phone, and then there'll be someone squatting on your phone. You can move close, move back, and then you can learn how to squat that way. We also have Baguio Barbell. I'm, I wanted to start this startup because I'm also I'm passionate uh, about fitness, and I want to bridge the gap between um, online coaches. Since ngayon, um, we don't really we conduct face-to-face -face training, and we can do a lot of online coaching, and this app is going to, I think, really help. Although we have no um, prototype yet, we plan to have it, um, we plan to run it through the incubation program in hopes of by the end of the program, we have at least an MVP or a prototype. We also have financial tech. So with um, FinTech, we only have one. It's called Spare App. So they already have their patent and they have their copyright for the, for the application. So basically how they work, the problem that they saw was kapag bumibili po kayo sa store, um, Sometimes they'd ask, sir, my three pesos po kayo para bigyan ko na lang ng 20. So that they don't have to um, do that. They thought of this app. Um, let's say your change is 344.50, pero wala, wala silang sukli. They can't give you the coins because they don't have coins. You have the, uh, you have the option to save 44.50, para ibigyan nila yung 300 pesos in cash. And then yung 44.50 will be saved in the application. Just like Gcash, that you can use it to spend and you can use it to buy. We also have Internet of Things, um, a smart electronic outlet, or SMELO. Their aim is to build better and safer homes and establishments by avoiding appliance defaults through its IoT, or Internet of Things-based system, hardware and mobile application. So the way they work is you attach an outlet to your appliance at home, and you can access it through the Internet. So, for example, yung laptop ko po, naka-charge I attach the smello. It looks like this. Medyo bulky nga lang. Um, this is the first prototype that they made. You attach this smello, and then you attach it to your um, to your outlet at home. And then at, uh, if you're away from your house and you forgot to turn out turn off your outlet, you can access it through the application. So this is how the application looks. Like this. So um, it could also uh, avoid appliance default. That was the main goal. And then we also have Project RG, which is the OCO incubating with the SLU Convergent Resilience TBI. So with um, Carol and um, the interns that we have um, acquired, they're, they're going to be working on the machine learning or the brain or the artificial intelligence part of Project RG. Um, yeah, so this is the layout of the UCN's TBI. We're located at Legarda Road, um, the criminal justice building in uh, Legarda Road of UC. And um, we have a customizable event center. Um, we have a collaborative space, a workstation if you guys want to work um, in a more quiet space. And um, it opens to everyone. Although um, this time, uh, since um, the pandemic is still kind of here, um, we're limited to how many we can um, accommodate in the space because we need to also observe um, proper social distancing protocols. <clears throat> and um, at the TBI, we have... Uh, Five desktop units, four laptop units, one drone, and two 3D printers if you guys want to make use of um, our facilities. Since um, our forte is more on um, software development and uh, graphic design, I mean mostly really software development um, and developing startups, tech startups, um, we really need the manpower of the different um, computers and laptops that are available. Um, yeah, so in the past year, uh, from April 2019 to April 2020, We've conducted uh, 15 industry partner meetings for our startups, um, 16 capacity building events for um, us, the manpower of the TBI, and we've also hosted 32 events, um, which brought our reach to kind of like yeah, 2,300, almost 2,400 in physical reach, and our social media reach in almost 70,000 um, up until April 2020. So right now we're not, we haven't really looked at the insights yet, but we're hoping to surpass this at least the end of the second year until April 2021. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about the CUC and TBI, and we invite everybody to come over to the TBI and visit if you guys have time. Thank you. Okay, thank you thank very you. much, Angel. So reserve na namin yung questions namin sa'yo. Thank you very much, Sir uh, Ethan. Uh, mga kasamahan sa media. We'll begin with um, Angel Castillo of Baguio Chronicle. 
Angel? To be followed by? To be followed by Alduin uh, Kitasol. Kitasol of Tribune. Um, dun, siguro andun na yung mic, okay? Pull, pull mo na lang yung share, siguro Angel, para magapit mo yung mic. Okay. okay. Sige, dyan, dyan na lang, dyan na lang. Mas malapit ka na dyan. We are facing multiple social and environmental issues. What are our most pressing concerns as from the point of view of city planning? Um, yes po. Environmental po ang pinakamalaking issue natin and um, sa transportation po. Um, kailangan masolve natin kaagad. Otherwise, uh, hindi po huhu pa itong issue natin sa um, traffic jam and uh, air pollution. So, these are consequential po to um, traffic problems. Eh. And, of course, the next naman is our diminishing green cover. So, ang mga forested areas po natin, either lumiliit na po yung land area niya, or nauubusan na rin po ng trees. And nako-convert na sila to other uses. So, we really have to step up our protection um, and management um, projects as well as activities. So, there are others po, but uh, these two are the most um, pressing, I should say. And a lot of our efforts uh, should be put into this. And actually, the reason po why I invited UC and SLU is because um, the, the city cannot think of all the solutions na pwede nating gamitin, lalo na on technological solutions. And I think na the academe would be very, very important in helping us discover what could be um, solutions that we could um, implement. And um, technology nga po yung uh, tinitingnan natin. And I hope that uh, since uh, UC and SLU has been inviting us to join them, may I take this opportunity to invite them also to um, get into a design thinking with uh, our local government unit on how uh, we can um, implement technological solutions for um, our traffic problem as well as our green cover diminishing spaces. Are there any specific actions that the city planning department is taking for these issues? Um, as to transportation, uh, this is something that we are working out with us, uh, our city engineering office. So right now, po, um, they are formulating the public utility transportation plan. And uh, ito po is to rationalize yung mga location ng mga jeepney terminals natin and yung mga rota nila. So we want to make sure na makakover natin as much of Baguio. But uh, we minimize po yung, um, yung nag-intersect sila. Kasi yun nga yung root cause ng um, jam. And then um, we're trying to design it in such a way na maililink po natin ang public transportation with micro-mobility. So micro-mobility is when we walk or we use bicycles or tricycles or any other um, non-vehicular uh, transportation system. So uh, what we have in mind po is ililink natin mga to na hindi na tayo very, very uh, dependent na from point A to point B Naka-jeep tayo all the time. So, meron po tayong multimodal system that uh, on the first mile, we walk or we use the bike and then we get public transportation and then on the last mile, we walk again. Mga ganun na po para kumaba yung density ng vehicular traffic dito sa city. And of course, uh, this also has uh, health, this has positive health um uh, what is the better term for that? Effect. Kasi, um, well, you see, napansin ko to nung no, tuturo pa ako, na ang estudyante sa SLU, pupunta lang sa SM, mag-jeep. When, in fact, uh, I remember when I was a lot younger, I can walk until um, Mindsview. 
I guess it's possible in Baguio. We have a nice um, weather. But the thing is, no, who's not going to spaces? Natin. And you can see na right now with this administration, talagang puspusan yung pag, uh, pag acquire ng road right of way, pagkakaroon ng sidewalk. So nakikita nyo na po na we are moving on towards that plan na we link public transportation with micro-mobility. Um, my next question is to Dr. Eh, Dr. Ram. You, are, do we have, a, I mean, any parts of Tengat have you provided with these improvised samples? You mentioned Ato, or, Ato, uh, Ato, Tuba, Tuba, uh, Tublay, Apugias, Trinidad. La Trinidad, and we have some in our office, uh, regional office, too. I think there's a man on a training hub committee. Uh, yan, at saka meron ako pinadala sa Kalingya. Are we planning on spreading this to the rest of Carden? Yeah. Actually, the thing there is after they made the cabinet, so they begin it as the next station. So the next station will have to reproduce it. So until ma may pasa-pasa para makita na, so they can all use it. So, with the, with the inclusion of these improvised rescue materials, would you say that our region is equipped for its needs of hula po ba tayo or namimit po ba yung naman? Actually, give me that. Uh, uh, number two yata, Uncle Delera, with the number, number of vehicular residents. Ang daming vehicular residents na dito. We cannot really say na sasabihin mo na mamimit niya. It's hard. Kasi every day, the, ano, although in Baguio City, ang daming respondent, two ba ang daming respondent, but at real time, hirap yung bumbero natin. There, there, there will be areas, particular two ba, I, I never knew until maging regional director ko, nahawak pa pala ng two ba ang Kenan Road. And we don't have a first station over there. So it would take them quite a while para to reach that area. So if they make this and try to transport, uh, transform this into a our Oakland Ligtas Pamamayan and teach it to my barangay level, may, at least may magagawa na dun sa on the level of that area. So hindi na kailangan muna magano. But we're try, still trying to develop still things na para maka, may, ma, makagawa kami maraming improvised materials, rescue materials. Last question for verification. For both Sir Ethan and Mom, and Mom Maria, do I make? How do your students? How how are they introduced to your incubation programs? Do they have to apply, or they on a grade review? And is it a cost to them or what not? Um, in our case, um, we have technopreneurship already integrated in every college of the university. So as early as second, first year, they already, um, they already have an idea that there's a TBI uh, in UC, and they can just um, access us through their instructors, or they can visit us at the TBI if they have an idea that they have in mind. So like Mam Kor said earlier, um, what we really want to avoid is the shelving of um, the researches, the papers. Um, Sayang kasi yung ideas nila. Why, why can't we um, scale them up further and um, potentially commercialize them in the future, right? For our case, it's the same because we have a subject, uh, Techno 101, and of course the researches, but there are certain stages that we have to also check if this one is really patentable or this one is really for commercialization. We have to check also if this one is, uh, has, it has a little future for, uh, for such uh, in, in incubate, incubating it. So, yes, they will apply. Kasi hindi lang naman in the, uh, the students who will be involved in our, in our program, also for the uh, community, they can apply also to us. So, hindi kami limited sa students lang. So, it's also for the community. They can apply, yes. Okay, that's all for me. Angel. Thank you, Angel. Pati sa blan. Pati, uh, pati, pati sa blan daw, Angel. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Ingyal sa natin si Aldrin Kitasol ng uh, Tribune.
And then uh, susundan po ni Pijun Lopien and Dexter C. Uh, Kani City Planning. Uh, Ma'am, sinasabi mo kanina na the concern of the city ay ang transport and then the, yung kumakunting ng green cover ng city. So, parang pinaplano po natin yung mga hapang na dapat natin gawin ay paano po natin i- niaangkop ito sa existing comprehensive plan ng pag- um, Ang ginagawa ngayon is uh, we are trying to Um, make sure that we have a very good database uh, in terms of asan ang lahat ng mga resources dito sa city. Kasi one of the things na kailangan natin to be able to manage this very well is we know where everything is. Okay? So uh, right now, uh, we are trying to make sure that uh, we will have a, uh, a very comprehensive um, map and database of all uh, resources that are present in our city. And then um, afterwards, kung may mga computations din kasi yan, eh, we can compute kung ilan yung kailangan pa. Uh, kaproject din tayo kung ano pa yung kakailanganin in the future. RPN Radio Philippines Network. Radio Ronda. DZBS Radio. Memory. where we can plant a vegetation. But another thing that we have to look into is um, the way that uh, architectural design is changing also. So you might have heard of um, green walls and green roofs. Uh, ito is um, a, a design movement na ang iniisip nila, whatever you remove on ground, you replace on the roof level or on the vertical walls. Again, so these are um, possibilities of recouping, recouping our green spaces. So, uh, of course, we cannot discount the fact that we have to grow. Diba? Uh, our population will grow. There will be more settlements needed in the city. And, of course, when we say settlements, we talk of land use. But, Um, yun nga eh, since we are a very small city and we have this much population here, then we have to think of creative and disruptive ways of getting green back to our city. And we are looking at that. Yung technological solutions, architectural and engineering solutions. Hindi man um, kakayanin ang all-natural na revegetation activity. Um, at present po, ano, ano yung percentage ng green spaces or green cover ng public? Um, as of now, 50-50 tayo. 50% built up, 50% um, green. Pero ang ideal kasi niyan is um, 60-40. 60% green, 40% built up. So, um, since like what I mentioned earlier, we're, we're running out of land already, Then um, our next, um, the next thing that we will look into is how we can convert our rooftops into urban forests or urban gardens. And then you have heard of survival gardens diba, during the pandemic. And this is now to make use of our backyards or even whatever it is that uh, we have as space where we can plant. So this is um, an activity na we want to... We discover in ourselves the gardener. No? So, naging urban dwellers na kasi tayo and we seem to have forgotten of a past na tayo eh magaling mag And these are things that uh, we have to teach ourselves and the others also. Now, we, we have to work as one here. It just cannot be the passion of one person because this is a problem. That is prevalent to a large area. So um, these are some of the things that uh, we are looking into, and it's actually uh, being implemented right now. Also, our city environment and parks management office is very active into in urban regreening projects. Natin. And one of the things that uh, you can see right now, and this has been reported, is uh, 
yung pagbawi ng uh, three meter easement sa mga waterways natin. So, ang intention dito kasi, kaya may easement, is to retain it as a green space. Pero anong ginawa ng mga ibang tigabagyo? Well, they built over the creek and they blocked the passageway of water. That's why we are having flooding here. So, what uh, the city is doing right now is to make sure that we get back those spaces. And the three-meter easement on both sides, we will convert it as a biodiversity corridor. So uh, what we have in mind is that we will replant those stre long stretches of easement um, between a creek, a waterway, or a river. And we will make sure that this is something also that the citizens can enjoy. The biodiversity areas, I balik natin yung mga trees which used to grow dito sa city. Para sa atin, hindi natin nakita yung bagyo. Last year, nakita ng bagyo the 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 moss which our uh, city was named after. So um, the intention of the biodiversity area is to recreate yung space nyan because it was not all um, pine forest dito sa bagyo before eh. Meron tayo yung mossy forest. Dun galing yung bagyo, and yun yung gagawin din sa biodiversity corridor. And magiging ano siya, pedestrian area and cycling area. Now, so can you imagine that it is going to be a very, very nice um, space? And ililink ulit natin siya sa transportation system. Kasi ang goal ngayon is kung meron mang next pandemic or during this pandemic, di ba nung nag-ECQ tayo, we were all incapacitated. We cannot move. Because we do not have these uh, pedestrian spaces to move into, to get from one point to another, from home to our workspaces. So we're trying to solve these problems now. So we saw kung saan mahina ang city. And ang gagawin natin is to make sure na kung ano man yung kahinaan natin, e eh, masosolve natin the soonest possible time. To make sure that whatever disaster comes next, we are ready for it. Um, ano po yung plano natin sa mga nakatira sa uh, Inangki? Uh, yung plano natin, ano ang ating approach sa kanila? Yung mga nakatira sa? Sa mga creek. Yung, ah, uh, yung mga, uh, those who built over the creek. Pero yung law naman dyan, eh, they shouldn't have done that. They have encroached on those spaces. So it's just the city getting back what is Uh, the city. And it's not just for the city, actually, it's for every one of us. We need these green spaces. So, um, there are ordinances and there are laws. Now, we have the environment code. These are all uh, these spaces. They have been very well stipulated that they should be left as an open space. So, it's just us getting back what is due. Thank you, Thank you, uh, Sir Alvin Kitasol. Uh, now let's have Mr. Pijon Lobien of, of the Philippine News Agency to be followed by Mr. Dexter C. Sir Pijon. Magandang hapon po. Sa kwan sa SLU ba at sa UC, there were two problems mentioned sa city. So as, you know, idea, what could be the idea to help out the city solve this, uh, these two problems na pwedeng ma-incubate and later help out the city? No. For now, for now, you know, a theoretical thing. So, uh, in our case, we have uh, a lot of talents in St. Louis University. We have architects and engineers that could uh, provide solutions to this problem. That's actually the gap that we have been experiencing in the past. Yeah, we have uh, samples of this. Uh, we were able to come up with a research called the uh, Agua, Agua Kuha, which would probably help, um, like, for example, we have buildings that would uh, be very good during disasters, would hold a building that even if you shake it, it's still standing. You know, so we have already solutions to uh, some of the problems in, in the city, but There's a gap. We we cannot connect to the local government. That's the reason why this one is a very good opportunity for us to showcase what we have and probably to consider also 
our solutions to the, uh, for the community. So it's just a matter of talking and uh, evaluating what we have, like a SWOT analysis that we know what our strengths and what our weaknesses are, and to talk about the problem and come up with solutions with our experts in the in the St. Louis University. And it is already possible because um, you know, we are being equipped by uh, this technology, equipment, Unlike before, wala po itong mga ito eh. So it's difficult for us to also show you a prototype of what we can do. So it's just a matter of talking po between us and of course the local government who would own that startup. Of course, the researchers po, yes. And it is possible. UC can provide us the technology where we can make it like something like robotics or an AI. We have the... Uh, uh, the engineering side, we could do the fabricate all, all, all the things that, that you need. All, all we need to do is to plan lang po and to talk. Yun po, yun sa atin. I agree. And in addition po, earlier this year, we, since um, our forte is more on software development and um, less on hardware, um, I wouldn't say that it's limited, but kind of is to more tangible types of products. But um, earlier this year, we were collaborating with um, different colleges in the university to come up with a startup that could address traffic in UC. I think it was something called uh, like U Park, but then COVID happened, and uh, we weren't really able to push through with that startup. Um, we're trying to tap the different uh, founders and uh, previous um, members of that initial startup, but um, some of them graduated, and some of them have different ventures. But uh, startup is still something that we're looking into within the uh, TBI of UC. Okay, so you're good na si John. So, hindi na magtatanong si um, Dexter si. But anyway, uh, siguro pang huli ko na lang katanungan kasama ang Recon. No? Yes. Siguro sa SLU and kay, sir, uh, sa UC kay Sir Irvan. There are a lot of um, unsolicited um, proposals ang ibinibigay sa city. But we have SLU and um, UC have so many already no, mga, mga innovations. Do you have any plan on talking to um, directly to the mayor? Kung ano po yung mga innovations yung pwede nyo especially right now that we do have a lot of pressing problems like for example our garbage collection at least kung ito po yung mapagtunan natin Malaki po, ano, ang, uh, masasave, hindi lang masasave yung ating environment for Baguio City, but of course, saving yung cost dahil napakalaki po ng binabayaran natin dito sa pagdating po sa pag-uhaw ng ating mga garbage. Um, Ma'am Cora? Ma'am Cora? Uh, this is actually my second time to present po in the City Hall that we have this. And the first time na nag-present po kami was uh, doon sa baba. Yeah, and... Uh, they were saying that, yeah, it's good, you have that, but there is no more action after that. So it's also uh, very difficult for us to reach the, to reach out. So what, what do we need to do? So even if we pass for some recommendations, will they listen to us? These are also our questions in mind. So the reason why um, we also make use of certain uh, researches that may survey of what really is the need dito po sa ating community is because we wanted to help. And that's the, the reason why we have these uh, technologies na in St. Louis University. The question is, uh, local government, are you going to listen? So how are we going to approach you? So yun po yung question ko rin. Okay, so ang problema yung reception siguro ng LGU. Kasi sinasabi po namin yan dahil napakarami pong unsolicited uh, proposals, no? Even um, make presentations sa council, Pero at the end of the day, it's more of commercial, no? Talagang yung para lang siguro kumita. Um, Ethan? So Ethan? Okay, thank you po. Um, I think, yeah, the, one of the big things that we need to do is really collaborate with each other through design thinking, which we've been practicing for quite a while now. Really understand what it is the people of the city need. And um, in doing so, I think it would be a big um, benefit to them if we can all come together and, you know, maybe hold the... Uh, I monthly or monthly meetings for, then I think it would be a big help. Probably we can we can recommend for uh, to uh, come up with a committee like 
sa R&D of the City Hall, siguro we, the academy would be uh, very much willing to help po. Okay. I think with, with, dahil nandito naman na si Architect Tabangin, siguro mas madali nang i-communicate, no? Um, malapit naman sa King Mayor, so mas madali siguro makapunta na kayo, Ma'am Cora, at saka si uh, Ethan. Pakikinggan naman, pakikinggan na kayo siguro. Okay. So, Rico? Alright, naging uh, makabulahan po ang ating uh, pag-uusap ngayong uh, hapon na ito sa City Hall Hour. And uh, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa ating mga panelists. Of course, uh, bago natin uh, sinapakawalan, eh, let's have their closing statements. Sunahin po natin mula po sa University of the Cordilleras uh, Innovation and Nurturing Space, Mr. Ethan Miguel B. Salvador, sir. Thank you, Bo. I think for me, Uh, when I was invited to this, I was quite intimidated, to be honest, because uh, <laughs> coming in, coming in with um, the caliber of the other panelists, it was quite intimidating for me. But as I sat down here and listened to um, the experience, from their experience and what they have to say, it really um, resonated with me and the, the different things that we can accomplish together um, with UC, with SLU, with the city of Baguio, and maybe even the other universities of the Philippines. So I think even through just Maybe we can get through COVID together, but it shouldn't just like be for COVID, but it can be even past that and um, we can all um, thrive in the uh, wonderful city of Baguio. Thank you both again. Thank you very much, Sir Ethan. From the St. Louis University School of Engineering and Architecture, the SLU Incubator for Research, Innovation, and Business, or CIRIP, Ms. Maria Corazon Ocampo. Ms. Cora? Uh, again, thank you for inviting us, Architect Donna. Thank you for this opportunity. And I have, I hope that we will be, uh, we will be invited again and hopefully be part of your solution. And uh, yes, we have the technology, we have the, the talent in, and you know that. And it's just a matter of uh, collaboration and collaborating with uh, these people. And we hope that The next meeting that we will be having is they're already talking about problems and solutions for the community. And we are very able and we are willing to help you. Thank you. Maraming salamat, uh, Ma'am Corazon. At siyempre po, ang uh, Chief Health Services ng uh, sa National Headquarters ng uh, BSP, si Doc, ganun na lang, ano? si Doc Ram na, Sir Roderick Esteban B. Ramirez. Sir? Maraming salamat po. So, Actually, sinasabi ni Isa na intimidated daw siya. Sa akin nga, very crude pa nga yung gawa ko eh. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't feel intimidated. Don't be. <laughs> you have got a lot of bright ideas and shit uh, what are listening. So that is one way of uh, fucking you up, you know, uh, as someone na uh, senior na sa'yo. Just, you have a lot of ideas. And, uh, I would like also to collaborate with us a lot of things to modernize the Bureau of Protection. I will tell this about our party uh, once I come back to so improve our system for CBRN, a particular CBRN and for disaster management. And we could help that. We have a lot of ideas. I met a lot of uh, guys, officers, who made a big difference, particularly for those Marawi. Na tuwan-tuwa yung, ano, yung CIA. Would you believe ang CIA gumagamit, gumagamit ng, ng drone na Kepler made? Ang Pilipino gumagamit ng plastic made. Tapos lahat ng tama ng bala, inlasteran lang nila. Sibigyan ng tip. But they were able to survive and they made a better view of the whole of Marawi system. Just using, uh, they made their own plane. Uh, they made their own plane. They bought it, uh, in the, they, they bought it the SM. They bought the camera, placed it, and it worked. And pinagtikit-tikit yung baterya ng cellphone. So those are the things they innovated and it worked. And they get a better view for, uh, compared with the ones bought by the armed forces. So yun mga sinasabi natin. And we, uh, we have a lot of thinkers on the field. And I think this is a very good venue. I would like to thank uh, you guys for inviting us. And it will really enrich our knowledge and our skills. Maraming sa amin na were really into this thing. Uh, maraming salamat po. Okay, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo, Doc Ram, and of course, the Head City Planning and Development Coordinator ng ating pong syudad, Architect Donna Rillera Tabangin. Yes, so, um, this is the age of disruption. 
in the age of collaboration. And sometimes po, we need to come together and have this conversation to discover what each and every one of us is doing. And if we just work in our own spaces, po, yung mga silos natin, we will not be able to get into this um, instance na we are ready to come together and solve common problems. Um, ang problema po sa Akadim is wala silang laboratory to test their prototype. Itong city po natin is one vast laboratory. And I think this should be the time that uh, yung triple helix model that is the like academe, the industry, and the local government should come together and share bring innovation. So you cannot say that innovation lies with academe because DOCRAM is a very good example now that wherever you are, as long as the passion to innovate is in you, that you can just do about anything. So um, I hope that this would become a regular um, activity for the city. And dun nga po sa um, design thinking and solutions making natin, uh, maybe uh, this should be the start. So I, I would like to promise that this is already the start of these uh, frequent conversations and collaboration between academe, the local government, and industry to explore yung likas na innovative mind ng lahat sa atin. So, hindi natin masasabi na it's just a, with a certain sector of society. It's all within us. And uh, we just have to have this environment where we can come together and start a conversation like this one. And then, Sabi nga ni uh, Ma'am Cora, to follow through. Yun po yung palaging kunang eh, that valley of death. We always fall in that valley of death. And I think this is the time that we build that bridge over that valley so that everything that comes as an idea, especially if it's a very good idea, reaches the intention of ano man yung, yung objective ng no idea na yan. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, thank you very much, Architect Tabang Enrico. All right, thank you very much. Ma sa lahat po ng ating mga manunood at uh, tagapakitig, marami pong salamat. Sir Mix of uh, Sky Cable, thank you very much. Ako po si Rico John on 95.9 Big Sound FM. In behalf of City Hall Hour, maraming salamat. Koordinasyon ng gobyerno at komunidad tungkol sa mahusay na pagpaplano para sa magandang development. Magandang bagay po sa ating lahat. Philippines Network, Radio Ronda, DZBS Baguio, member kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas. Ito po ang City Hall Hour, ang buwan ng programa ng Public Information Office ng uh, Lungsod ng Baguio sa pangihipagtulungan ng Sky Cable Channel 53, Community Channel 53, Radio Pilipinas o so RP1 Radio Pilipinas 999 kHz, 1368 kHz, DZBS, RP and Baguio at 95.9 Big Sound FM Baguio City at sa uh, Facebook Live po ng PIO Baguio City, mapapanood niyo rin po ito. Ako po si Rico John at 95.9 Big Sound FM at kasama natin ngayong hapon si Mr. Mix Velasquez ng Sky Cable Baguio. Magandang hapon sa iyo, Sir Mix. Magandang hapon sa iyo, Orin. Siyempre, magandang hapon po sa ating mga tulong viewers. Siyempre, mga kasamaan natin sa media. Kasi kung ano, katang ang Rico kanina, sabay marami tayong mga guests this afternoon. So, video one, makakasama po natin sila. At hindi po tayo ng update. That's right. Ngayong uh, hapon po nito ay makakasama natin mga opisyal ng ating uh, lungsod para pag-usapan po ang mga issues at solusyon sa mga kinakaharap na mga pagsubok ng ating lungsod. Ngayong hapon po may kakasama natin mula sa City Planning and Development Office ang, uh, ang ating CPD Coordinator, si Architect Dona Rillera Tabagin. Makakasama rin po natin si Fire Senior Superintendent Roderick Esteban Ramirez, MD, ang Chief Health Service ng National Headquarters ng Bureau of Fire Protection, our former uh, Regional Director ng BFP Car, actually. Mr. Ethan Miguel V. Salvador then, uh, Incubator Manager, QC Innovation and Nurturing Space sa uh, University of the Cordillera. Then Ms. Maria Corazon Campo ng uh, SLU Incubator for Research, Innovation and Business, o yung pinatawag na series. 
the School of Engineering and Architecture ng St. Louis University. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, sa mga report po, isisana po natin. We'd like to welcome a board from the uh, University of St. Louis University. Good afternoon to everyone. It's an, honor, it's an honor to be here in front of everyone today. Um, I guess just to share a little bit about me. I am the project lead for startup development in the University of the Guadalupe. So we're based in the community charge of like, developing your startup community here in the Philippines. Um, startup being the field of information technology. So many startups like Facebook, uh, Uber, these all started as small tech startups before and basically to these big tech giants that they are now. So that's the main goal that we want to achieve here in the Philippines as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this time. I'm going to talk to you about the media. So let's talk about it from the TV University. The TV video for the research in the elevator and business Thank you very much, ma'am. And of course, ito ang nagpagala na po natin sa dati po natin siyang original director ng PSP. Now, of course, the Chief Health Services ng ating national headquarters. We'd like to welcome Fire Senior Superintendent Roderick Esteban Ramirez. Sir, maganda ka po sa inyo. Okay lang ako din po. Thank you for inviting me. I think you would have said that uh, it's a hello and goodbye session for me. So the country to the national headquarters uh, to the leading of the FP Contellera as a regional director of the GM is a very able new director under the name of Papa Senior Superintendent in the Arabic, which has been taking over after a year since the Nico Medera and Sermon being invited to Ramit Ramit. Okay, Ramit Ramit. Thank you, sir. And now, of course, our city planning and uh, development coordinator, no, siya po ang ating uh, uh, city planning guest, would like to welcome architect Donna Riviera Tabaki. Huh? Tabaki po. Tabaki po. I think they need to tell my name. Oh, okay. Sino po yung may kagagawan niya? Tayo po daw, tayo po. But that's all right po. Um, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, I'm very glad to uh, joining me this afternoon, and I am uh, probably happy for because um, I get to meet Stephen and Miss Carla again. I used to work with them two months ago, so I crossed over to public service two months ago. But uh, we used to uh, share the same innovation space pre COVID, and uh, it's very nice to see um, Stello, Chris Green again. And of course, uh, I would like uh, to thank. Um, Dr. Ramirez for um, coming this afternoon. I suppose it's all good by <laughs> All right, so since uh, nandiyan na ho si yung mikropono kay uh, uh, architect, ano? Uh, Ma'am, kumusahin po natin ang ating city with regards to its uh, development and uh, beautification po. Yes. Um, in fact, um, the first week that I joined uh, public service, um, before, um, before COVID, this was um, September and January of 2020, um, I was part of a consultancy group which did the uh, very capacity study for Bali. And um, I think um, the word probably there is um, serendipity or pinaghana. Na kung sino yung gumawa ng very capacity study is of the transfer sa city planning and development office para doon na magtrabaho. Kasi kung ano man yung findings ng study na yan, these are the things that need to be which I might use that word already because our city, well, honestly, is not really healthy as it is right now. Uh, we have um, several social and uh, environmental problems that we have to contend with. And of course, um, after that, this pandemic, therefore, um, parang pinagpatong patong ang mga issues and challenges that uh, we are facing right now. But of course, as our leadership said, na wala ang burungan. And um, that's how we're getting into um, this uh, solution space already. And I think na yung, yung 
ginawa ko sa past life ko nung nasa academe pa ako, especially on my TDD and innovation, has um, helped me a lot during my um, first few months of stay here in um, the city hall. So, um, in terms of um, our office at the city planning and development, we are making sure that we're putting our acts together because uh, we are facing a big challenge ahead. And all the skill sets of everyone there, including, of course, the other um, departments in City Hall, will have to work together. So as our office um, says, uh, it's not really an office, but a coordinating. Um, we have to put all acts together because um, this challenge requires um, a system approach. Hindi na yung one spot lang. Ay, hindi na pwede makakompartmentalize ang planning as an office or one activity. But it has to be something that's coordinated to everyone. One goal, one mission, is one office. That's city policy. So, ganun na yung, parang paano ba man, ang direction siguro, coordination. So, of course, you came from private, Um, this is uh, academic is theoretical. <laughs> Ito po is application. So I bridged that gap. Now uh, from uh, research and theory, I have moved to application. And um, whatever I have learned from the academic po is something that truly used to na ang benchmark po for everything po that I'm trying to um, implement here. And um, I am very glad that I can say the being background ko because it has given me the tools as well as the technology, which I hope to be very useful in solving the challenges ahead. Okay. So, um, um, of course, um, do you, how do you plan, like, for example, how do you make any recommendations to the mayor? You know, for the fact that before you still have to plan, uh, as a city administrator, he's an engineer. Uh, paano po kayo nagpapakasinit ng ating ano, um, city administrator? Uh, do you have any recommendations to the administrator or even to our city mayor? Yes po. Uh, what happened right now, in fact, I just finished a presentation this morning during the month ago. And um, at the kicking ecosystem na po namin, while um, minsan may mga challenges po sa lakas, and then um, during one from we discussed about it and then they point out that it might be something that could be solved by the planning office. And then afterwards, um, of course, if the solution doesn't just come from one office, so we have to, like what I said earlier, coordinate. And you say the main role for the new staff of city planning that we really have to be all over the place because um, data doesn't just decide in our office. And of course, the skills and um, knowledge is well. Especially since um, the different department heads who I must want to learn that people and they know the ins and outs. And of course, um, I am very grateful that um, our city administrator is um, Daniel De La Peña because he was my team when <laughs> I was still teaching at State University. So we know the work best thing of each other already and uh, well as you can see from engineers in it into application. So um maganda po yung aming um collaboration when it comes to the planning side, the theoretical side and the implementation part. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We'll get back to you, uh architect uh Tabangin. And now uh pakinggan naman muna natin ang uh mga plano at uh, mga strategies naman ng ating mga taga Bureau of Fire Protection. Kasama ko natin si Fire Senior Superintendent Audrey Castevan B. Ramirez, MD. Okay, nang hapa po either. Nang hapa po po si strategy so we are moving to modernization. Uh, the government is coming for our modernization. But unfortunately, uh, hindi naman ito kapiyente ito. Lahat sa mga 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 Apart from the uh, the modern life of 
be very expensive. Kasi so, lumaga na kumaha ng pal So, beyond that, I'm going to work with a rescue and take that to do rescue and get that particularly with the executive order number specific. They think that the fear of fire will be the leading team for the EMS and provide with the rescue and technical rescue. So, the second that, the second that is we still have a long way to go. So, ito naman, uh, Yung, 
Yan yung blue drum ng ano ha, nung blue drum nung color of Latin. Uh, puro tumipo yan na before. So, before the track, the track po niya mura sa Divisoria. Ang song road is 260 pesos lang. Pero pagbili mo sa Rialta at mahal. So, quite a cheap. So, next slide. At it's uh, mainly for sa tanglang po to. Pati mga po meron nila sinuluan natin mga pagi. So, mga lalaki nagtatagi po sila. And those are the words of finish product. So, meron kami yung jigsaw cutter, with puppies, etc. So, nagtatagi po ang intermediation sa gamit ng drum. Yan. So, so, you will see here, yan po. Pampati sa training sa National Park Training Institute, we use it. Ang maganda dito, yung blue na drum, purang hapon, lahat na gamit po namin. So, next slide. Uh, ito muna price comparison. The entry is the US price is 146 US dollars. To import it, it's quite expensive, it's triple. It has a colorful spot. Sa po tumatala nyo sa akin, yung ginawa po, ang presyo abot na from 1.5 to 2 pounds at end with a labor of love. Diba? At ang metawag yan, diba? Na meron kang set of ownership. So, gusto ko parin mo, diba? Pag-aalagaan mo, you have to send the there. So, yun know, ano, I mean, po, tinuro ko magpahitin, okay? So, next slide. Uh, it's in the past, right? Then, that's the real point. Yan. Tapos, yung, bakit sinasabi ko ng tapon, yung extra po, ginawa natin yung street. So, kailangan natin maraming street, maraming sakit, then you have to do So, makikita niyo po. Now, kung pari doon, dahil sa tira na lang siya, kung ang expenditure is zero. Tama? So, kung mong dere, with the top, then it's cost 500 pesos, sa plywood, in plywood, bibili ka pa ng 1,200 pesos to 1,500 US pounds. Ito yung US pounds, it was still the top. Ano, 4 dollars. So, diba? Mahal. Diba? Mahal ang dahilan di ka rin. Now, ang pangalan ko doon sa ano, education device, we call it red, co-prime education device. Ay, ngayon, ito naman sa action device. So, so, let's put a name out. Ito, this is a Dyson device. Ay, guys, did you show yung mga gamit? Pakita nung camera. Ay, ano pala makita. Ito naman sa action device. I bought one. It was made in this Asian country. It was 9,000 pesos. But the original one, it's quite expensive. Yung case is na pakita nyo. Ano pa pinag-a-a. So, itinimit ako dito until I found a better metal which is the upper tubing ginagamit sa S1. Ayun po yung original din nasa may left side doon. And I tried to finish my next to this. Yun po ginagawa na ako. Ginagawa po. But after that, so may turo namin, ano, yun may natira pa ako kung strap, so nagamit ko po po. Ibig po ba, diba? So next slide. So yun po yung mga pinagamitan ko. So, minsan, nag-iisip ako how to use it, how to cut everything. Kasi ano, let's say, ayun, Isi ko ko siya na natin sa camera yun. Ito ito, mga recycles dito, ano? Yeah, actually, most of them are recycles. Ito mo natin, sino mong muna na ng tubig na yan, sir? So, kung bibili po tayo, that's your cost cost around. The whole thing, the whole package, if you make it, that would cost around 1.5 to 2,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos. Kaya yung mga plus, ano, we bought yung office box before yung sa manufacturer. Nasira na agad. So, kaya nga, Ayaw. And yun ang ipo yung location. Yeah. Pero doon yung ito. Yeah. 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 So nagawa namin. So po, yun ang kita natin. Kasi yung kita yung ilalim po yung mga yung brand ayos ko ng mga ano, yung nailalim ko, magiging ito sa Divisoria. In Penta Face, ito po yan ha, I grew up going to Divisoria guys. I grew up going to Divisoria guys. I grew up going to Divisoria guys. So, may maestrap na, ito na rin po. Kapag i-ano, lahat, it is a place on the top, guys. Ako, next slide, please. So, ito po, ginagawa po namin sa office, ina-temple namin. So, ito po, show me, so, makao ko doon po ako sa pagkaroon sila atin sa Then, ito nung nilagay ko yung price, hindi pa rin. Ay, hindi ko yan rin nilagay yung hindi pa rin. Yung rated at yung replica is 9,000. That would cost around 3,000 the most na. Ang isang set. 3,000. Or it's one for the price. Ah, yung price, ito yung price. Ito 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 yung price, ito yung price. 
Israel Heavenly Father. Uh, I use this as an honor to why not? Next slide for Sister Maniki. How much is the Sister Maniki? That's why I got it from the U.S. Kami na nag-introduce na ito po para unfortunately hindi yung Maniki po nung ano na pagkasarikan o yung region 7 teaching yung mga reports kami there. So, wala po and we have it. So, for the moment, meron kami na gano'n. Uh, for the moment is and right now, hindi na po pwede mo mga tumas na you know, Thank you. 
kita mau melom melom tadi lagi is my for itu ada satu for dalam warna hijau di file poli editing mana mana ada dalam bukan aku so we did it para ada aku reach out to the grassroots level para melom kita pero tayo po ang ship ano ba tayo ano tayo hindi lang kami tol out so bigay kami ng kwan so sa family na duwan so it is bigay kita sa hindi puro tol out so ito meron po so why am I doing this and why am I I'm sorry I grew up with this mantra I grew up with this mantra the lazy mind lazy and lazy mind is the playground so you just can keep it in the end of your feet on top of other things Dalawa, naging tatlo, apat, lima, kung naging ito. 
we call ourselves the power pop girls. So, kasi puro babae, we master mind <laughs> that, uh, that uh, civic center as we call it now. So, the title of what I'm going to present is Serving the Community by Promoting Technology and Innovation Justice. Pinagpagan ko na ng innovation. And we call our uh, hub the SMU Tech Hub. So, first, is, uh, let's talk about innovation. What about innovation? Um, I keep reading definitions of uh, innovation. And uh, I have a partner here. May I acknowledge the presence of my partner in research. He's uh, a uh, Nigerian-British uh, researcher also. And uh, he actually summarized this 50 definitions for me. So, sabi niya, the ultimate definition of innovation is when you execute an idea and it addresses a particular need. And this particular need is actually for what? For the users or what you call the customers. But it doesn't end there. It has what? Satisfy also the organization. Or we call it the company. And it's a topic to do with creativity. And of course, what we call the innovation, such as creativity. So these are the activities for creativity, for being creative and being innovative. So, what is the innovation therefore? So it has two components, being creative at the same time, and being innovative. So, first with creativity, when you think something new, Mago, or Brian, you can send it to me, sir. That is actually creativity. Gumamit sila ng mga materials na hindi mahal at napakinabangan ito ng mga tao, especially mga students. And when you implement this creativity, na sinasabi nila something new, that's correct innovation. But um, with innovation, it says here, we have to know, and it should be clear kung anong type of innovation ang gusto mong gawin. There are different types of innovation. It can actually what? It could actually center into customer innovation, process, product, technology, sanitize, even business model na sila sabi nila. And now we have what we call social innovation. We even have what we call architectural innovation. It's not the type of innovation na nag-evolve. And ito yung natili ko na simple lang na big mix ng innovation. So dalawa kasi yung classification so, so, we base it from technology units. Gaano ba kapago? At yung impact mo sa market. Or, ito ba talaga ay kailangan ng customer? So, dalawa. O, oh, dalawa lang yan. And, this is because already categorized innovation as sustaining, disruptive, incremental, and radical. So, if you just want to sustain what you have, like for example, iPhone, you want to sustain the market by just having a little bit of technology. So this is the thing. When you say disruptive, it is entirely different. Because you have a new market, you're creating a new market. And this one is actually coming from a certain idea that you want to implement because you want to what? Satisfy a new need and come up with the expansion of a certain market. So, kakaiba talaga siya disruptive. For incremental, ito naman is the gradual or continuous improvement of innovation or technology na i-input mo. So, what is existing ito? You do not actually extend or increase your market, but there are certain improvements because it was, you do not want to want. You do not want to be left behind. Meron kang kakakitin siya. And the radical thing, ito na yung and finally, even the business model. RPN Radio Philippines Network. Radio Ronda. DZBS Baguio. Member, kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng 